Hey there Dev Squad Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Endless Runner tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be showing you how you can set up your high score for your game. Now notice in the top right hand corner we've got the little high scores icon, however there is no text there. So what we're going to be showing you how to do in today's video is when you do hit a new high score it is going to update that number so the player has something to work against. We're going to be setting up all of the blueprints for the functionality for this and giving you a quick introduction to using save game data inside of Unreal Engine. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into it. So first of all, we actually need to store the save game information somewhere. Now the way the save game information is going to work is it's not going to be like a variable like you would have normally within the engine. We want this to persist even if the player has closed the game, restarted the level or anything like that. And the way you're going to do this is by creating a blueprint class and then underneath the all classes at the bottom here, you want to search for a save game blueprint. And then once you've found this, go ahead and press select and give this the name um, Endless Save Game. Once we've done this, we can actually start putting some information into this blueprint. Now, notice you can add in code and stuff into here, blueprint code that is into the event graph, but that's not really something we need to do. Instead, we are just going to simply add a variable in the top left hand corner and give it the name High Score value just like that and then for the variable type we're going to set this to an integer so it does match the value that we've got already for the in-game uh, the in-game current points that we've got hit compile and we can close this and we are good to go now what we need to do from here is actually write some code to first of all check to see whether or not there's a save game already and if there isn't go ahead and load the game and just change the values from that. Now, the way that I'm going to do this is from within my def function, and your def function is what's going to be happening, or a sequence of code that we've created already, which is going to be fired off once the player dies, and that is when it's going to check the score, see if it's, you know, greater than the current high score, and if it is, it's going to do its thing. So, what I'm going to do is open my third person character. Within this, I'm going to open up my def function. Now if you haven't got it open already, just go to your functions tab on the left hand side and double click it to open it. Within here, we are going to write a whole bunch of code. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Now there is going to be a lot to take in here as there is quite a lot of code that we're going to be writing. So if you do have any problems, just rewatch the video or set the speed of the video nice and slow. But if you follow along and have everything correct, it will work for you. So the first thing that we need to do at the end of our save game function is does save game exist? And this is basically just going to be checking to see whether or not we already have some save game data related to our high score. And the way that we're going to be doing this is by using a slot name. So what I'm going to do for the slot name is high score data, just like this. Now make sure you have your spelling 100% correct and remember the way you've capitalized things as this slot name is going to be something we'll be using throughout the video and if you don't have it 100% correct, it is not going to work. So. With this, does save game exist, we are going to drag out from the return value and use a branch node. And with this, what we can do now is just write some conditions for whether or not the save game exists already. So if it does, we can drag out from true and we can load the game from the slot if we've got one already. Now if it doesn't, what we're going to do is create a save game object so that we can actually start storing information in there. For the save game class we are going to use the endless save game which is the one that we've just created with our variable in there. Now notice up at the top here where it says load game from slot, the slot name 
needs to be exactly the same as it is over here. So what I'm going to do is click this once, press Ctrl C to copy it, and then Ctrl V to paste it in here so that I know it's 100% correct. Now, with our load game from slot, what we're going to be doing is essentially just converting this into a variable that we can work with. So drag out from your return value and promote this to a variable. And we're going to give this the name saver subclass. It's just essentially a variable we can quite easily interact with and use to save our game later on. So I'm going to drag this into place just like that. Now what I'm also going to do is copy and paste this set saver subclass node and paste it into my create save game object. So either way, we are always working with the same value for our save game, our same variable rather, regardless of whether or not we're loading one or creating one. It's just going to be one little subclass of, you know, blueprint that we can interact with to do our save game stuff. So once we've done that, what we now need to do is cast to our endless save game so that we can start interacting with the variable. And the variable in this case is going to be the high score number. So for your object for this, your object wildcard, hook this up into your saver subclass. And the reason why we're doing this is because that is the same type of information or where it's coming from rather. And what we're going to do is just copy and paste this down here for when you are creating the save game object as well. So essentially what we've done is created the object and then we've cast to it so that we can then access it quite easily. So if there is save game already, what we need to do is make sure it's only overwriting that information if the high score is higher than what is currently there. The way that we're going to do this is by dragging out from cast to endless save game and we're going to be adding in a branch node. With this branch node we're going to do a bit of conditioning and that conditioning is going to be integer greater than. So what we're looking for is if the current information is higher than the previous information we want it to return true and overwrite that. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So as the endless save game, we are going to get the high score value, which is the information that's currently there. And with this, we are going to hook this up into B. For the A, that is going to be our current number of points coming from our third person game mode. If you don't have that already, which I don't either, Essentially, what I'm going to do is move this along and get myself access to this information. So just before does save game exist, I'm going to cast to third person game mode, which is where we're storing our current points, and get the current points. For the object wildcard, that should be get game mode. And then it's going to take a moment to just quickly clear this up, keep it nice and tidy. Now I need this information to go over there. So what I'm going to do is drag this down, move it along, and I'm going to add a reroute node, which is just going to allow me to keep it nice and clean and hook it up into my A. So what this is doing now then is if there is save game information already, it is essentially checking to see whether or not the current points, the ones that you've just scored in this specific match, is greater than the existing high score. If it isn't, we don't want it to do anything. If it is, we want to replace that value. So the way that we're going to do this is by setting the high score value. So as endless save game, we are going to drag out from that and set high score value. And we are going to set this high score value equal to the current points that they've just scored. So once again, we can use this reroute node and plug it into there. And from there, we are good to go. And then all we need to do with that is save game to slot. And then for the save game you are trying to save, we are just going to set this to our saver subclass, which is what we've been manipulating with all of this 
blueprint code that we've been making. So drag and get a reference of, from that in your variables. Hook this into your save game object and then for your slot name, copy it from one of the nodes that you've used earlier so that you know it's 100% correct. And from there, that should be the top section done for when there is a save game already. So just to confirm, what you're doing is loading the game from the slot, setting it into a local variable we can interact with easily, and then we're casting to the endless save game so that we can get direct access to that information. What we're then doing is checking to see whether or not the current points is higher than the high score value. If it is true, then we're going to replace that with our new value and then simply save it to our slot. Going back down to the bottom for a fresh save game, we don't need to do that branch node. We're just going to set it, set that score in there no matter what because there isn't a high score already. So what we're going to be doing is as an, as endless save game, we are going to set high score value. And with that high score value, we are simply going to hook this up to our reroute node because we know that there we're just going to be setting the high score equal to the current points at the end of the game. And then all we're going to do after that is simply drag out and save game to slot. Once again, save game object should be save a subclass and slot name should be exactly the same as it is up here. And then what your code should look like is pretty much exactly the same as mine. So just to confirm, at the start, we are casting to the third person game mode to get the information for the current points. We are then checking to see whether or not the save game exists with the slot name that we've given. If it does, we're going to load that information, save it into a variable we can work with, and then we're going to cast to the endless save game so we can get direct access to those variables. From there, we're checking to see whether or not the high score data is greater than our new score and then we're just setting that if that is the case. If there isn't save game data already, we are creating a new save game object to save that information to and then all we're going to do is essentially just set this equal to a variable we can work with, cast to the endless save game so we can get direct access to those variables and then we are going to set that high score value equal to the current points and save it. And this bit should be all good. So if we compile this, we should be good to go from there. Now all we need to do is actually get that high score information displayed on the screen. And the way we're going to be doing this is all within our UI. So if you remember, within our runner HUD, which can be found underneath runner files, blueprints and runner HUD, we've got this little number in the top right hand corner. We need to create a binding which is going to access that save game information and display it on the screen. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is align my text to the right, in case you haven't done that already. And then for my content for the text, instead of having a manual value, we're going to create a binding. And within here, what we're going to be doing is just loading a game from the slot so we can access save game information. For the slot name, paste in your value from earlier, which is high score data, and then we are going to cast to the endless save game, just like this. And then as endless save game, we are simply going to get the high score value and hook this up into your return node. And what that's going to do is display your high score on the screen. For your minimum integral digits, set this to 4. Hit compile. And now if we press play, what we should have on our screen is no information to start with because there is no high score. If I go and get myself killed, you can see now it has updated that to 150, which is our current high score because it's our first high score press restart, die again, and you can see this time it hasn't overwritten it. But if I do beat the high score of 150, which is quite easy, just keep on running through the level, and then you see it's now up to 200. If I get myself killed, 
it's going to update that with the new high score and you can see it's working. It's got the grouping turned on so it's got the comma there which I don't want but I can change that quite easily. All we need to do now is simply just add the high score on the end game screen as well which is going to be using pretty much exactly the same code. So let's go and do that. So open up your runner HUD, go to your graph and just turn off use grouping on there because we don't like that and hit compile. And that is everything for the heads up display done. What we need to do now is go onto our end game screen. Now, for some reason, I'm not able to find this in my folder, so I might have placed it somewhere that I don't want it to be. So I'm just going to type in end game or game over screen, and you can see I've got this within my UI folder. Open this up, and then what we're going to be doing is adding in a piece of text just here next to the high scores icon and we are going to check the anchor point which is to the left hand side so anchor this to the left and we are going to give this text high score and then we are going to give it those semicolons as well and we're going to place this just like that in alignment and we're also going to give this a slightly different color to the rest of the text because it's our high score, it's not too important. We're then going to add another piece of text with the same color, which I'm just getting from my color picker and taking it from the text over there. And all I'm going to be doing with this is anchoring it to the left hand side, setting our justification to the left hand side, and then we're going to create a content binding again for this and we're just going to be copying the code from before so that is going to be load game from slot slot name is going to be high score data cast to endless save game using the return value as the object wildcard and then as as the endless save game we are going to get the high score value hook it up into your return value and make sure the execution pins are all linked up. Minimum integral digits for grouping off, hit compile and hit play. And what we should be able to do now is see our high score on the left hand side on our game over screen and that is working exactly as I wanted it to. So hopefully you guys have a better understanding of how high scores work inside of Unreal Engine 4 now and if you want to you can use it and adapt it to your game or you can add some extra functionality to your endless runner. It is entirely up to you but for now we have a working high score system set up for our endless runner game. Once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Vertus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.